a successful, if not controversial, season due to horsepower handicapping, Nissan drivers Mark Scaife and Jim Richards have arrived at Amaru Park today, ready for a clean sweep of the Amscar Touring Car Series. Only seven points separate Mark and Jim, but ready to upset their one-two parade is Tony Longhurst in the giant-killing B&H BMW. Bathurst and the Tui's 1000 beckon. The new generation V8 Falcons and 93 spec Holden Racing Team Commodore tested at the mountain this week in order to be ready for the all-conquering Nissans in just six weeks. John Bauer took hot lapping honours on Tuesday at the mount. Today it's back to real racing, Amaru style, as Seven Sport presents the end of the turbo era in the Amscar Series Grand Final. Hello Australia, I'm Mike Raymond. Welcome to Amaru Park Raceway. It's goodbye Godzilla Day today. The grand final of the Amscar Touring Car Series and what a race it promises to be. Two of them, in fact, this afternoon. Well, Jimmy Richards and Mark Scaife and their Winfield Nissans dominated practice yesterday. Mark Scaife on pole today. Jimmy Richards also under the track record. And I guess Neil Crompton and Mark Osler, that begs the question, do they need weight off for Bathurst? Well, a very difficult question to answer, Mike, but an awfully big gap between Amaru Park and Bathurst, particularly when you add 120 litres of fuel to those cars, but that's a, a question, Mark Osler, that will rage for the weeks to come. But uh, this race today looks like it's going to be very interesting. should be very interesting. I'm also impressed with the speed of these cars. Like, Mark was four-tenths of a second under the lap record, and I guess a lot of race fans will be wondering how much weight do they have to take out of these cars. They seem to be doing pretty well at the moment. And the BMW sitting right in behind, keeping them honest. Yeah, well, this is Tony's last run for this car. He's got a brand-new car for Bathurst, so I'll certainly be looking forward to that scene that thing on the mountain as well. Back here in May it was one heck of an Amscar race. We can look forward to another beauty today. Mike? Thank you Neil. We'll take a look at how they line up for heat number one. Starting off pole position Mark Scaife in the Winfield Nissan GTR. Teammate Jimmy Richards alongside. From three in 25 the B&H BMW is Tony Longhurst and from four in Carnaby Colin Bond the Caldex Sierra. From five 23 Paul Morris from Queensland in the B&H BMW. From six it's Mark Gibbs in the GIO Nissan GTR. From 721, Rowan Onslow in the GIO Commodore. From 824, Michael Donoher in the Commodore VL. From 9, it's Ben Radford in the Toyota Corolla. And rounding out the top 10, car number 88, Peter Brett. <laughs> seconds away from the start of heat number one in the Amscar Touring Car Series Grand Final today at Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway. Mark Scaife and Jimmy Richards ready to go. Off the starting line, one of the Nissans bogs down. It looked like uh, Scaife actually. Yeah, Mark just sat there and Jim got a tremendous start and races off to the top of the hill with Mark Gibbs in second place. Colin Bond up to third. And that was a dreadful start for Mark Scaife, and he's now got an awful lot of work to do over the 10-lap journey to try and recover some lost ground. He's on the inside of Rowan Onslow there, who's in the, the Silver Commodore this weekend, was formerly the GIO Commodore, now the Chicago Pneumatics entry. And there's Scaife, car number two. His team leader, and car number one, Jimmy Richards, in control, with Mark Gibson tucked right in behind as they go through the left-hander of Tui's. Gee, I almost thought it was the start of the warm-up lap there, the way Richards jumped away from the pack. They just left them standing. Colin Bond now moves off the back of the GIO Nissan as they come round the first time through stop corner. Jim Richards gets the power down on the GTR. And Longhurst, you can see the progress he's making through the pack already. I think he's up to fifth place as we take our track cam. The car's going right over the top of the camera. Spectacular view of Amaru Park as they head up the hill for the second time. To the top of Skyline again, there's Colin Bond, the Caltech Sierra, moving up pretty closely onto the pack. But it's Jimmy Richards, car number one, who leads from Mark Gibbs. Car number four, they exit that turn, then Bond, followed by Tony Longhurst. Next is Paul Morris, then of course Mark Scaife. We take uh, Seven's bumper cam riding right beneath the air dam on the uh, Benson and Hedges BMW. Tony Longhurst at the wheel. Spectacular pictures from here on a beautiful day at Sydney's Amaru Park. And here he is working away at Bond. Watch how close he gets. Faints one down the outside. Where'd it go? He, there he is, I'm still on the inside. Coming back off the turn, onto the start, finishing straight at Amaru. Let's see what Longhurst can do as he pulls onto the tail, looks for a tow in the draft of the Celtic Sierra. Bond gets away just a little up the hill. Now watch Longhurst close from this point on. Tony's making his usual charge through the pack, Bondy in third position. It's also interesting the point situation here because uh, Mark Scaife only leads his uh, teammate Jim Richards by seven points. So if he ends up down the pack, it's going to make the final a very exciting thing as far as the points for the final of the Amscar Championship. 
cast your mind back to last May and it was a tremendous race that we had here and all these guys closely matched and now Longhurst down the inside of Colin Bond's Caltech Sierra and sneaks up to third position. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead continues. Gibbs all over the back of uh, Richards. But there's something about this track, Mike, where all varying brands of cars and look at Mark Scape up the inside of Colin. He's got through cleanly under brakes. They all seem to bunch up and race hard and close. Yeah, it's an amazing little racetrack. I don't think it's probably the most preferred racing circuit in Australia for most of the teams. But they all agree, one thing for the spectators here and for television viewers around Australia, it is pure dynamite. Well, it's a great track to drive on too. Look at this battle here. We've got uh, two groups of two and Mark uh, Scaife also working hard to get back through the field. The two GDRs at the head of the field, the Winfield Nissan, Jimmy Richards followed by Mark Gibbs. Longhurst just tagging along in there. Quite a warm day up here today and a fair bit of dust and debris on the circuit. You can see how dry it is up here at the moment. That might help Tony towards the latter stages of this race. His tyres may be in better shape. He's getting a little bit closer to them. Make no mistake about that. They come down to the lake corner. Mark Gibbs all over Jim Richards on the number one Winfield Nissan. And look at Longhurst. <laughs> what a sensational move that was. That caught Gibbs uh, totally unaware. He was concentrating on getting past uh, Richards. While he was, Longhurst was through. That's how quick he is in this little B&H BMW. The sensational acceleration of that BMW out of a stop corner. You expect the four-wheel drive and the extra power of the Nissan to just leave it for dead. But the BMW matched him for acceleration, led him up the straight. And now Tony moves up into second position. Escape crowds in on uh, Gibbs. Well, according to the script, the BM is not supposed to be able to do that. But Tony <laughs> did it very effectively and got underneath Mark as he came through the stop corner. So it's Nissan, BMW, Nissan in third and fourth position. Very quick in qualifying yesterday, Mark Scaife, 50.88. He's the man moving through the pack at the moment as we take bumper cam. It's Tony Longhurst under the back of Jim Richards as they head down to the right hand at the slowest corner on the circuit. Jim protects his line. Tony tries to sneak up the inside like he did before. Couldn't do it that time. Now the right-hander. Back onto the start, finishing straight. Ten laps the distance of this one. Half distance completed. Five down, five to go. There's the order. Jimmy Richards leading from Tony Longhurst in the BMW. Mark Gibbs is next, followed by Mark Scaife, then Colin Bond in the Caltech Sierra. And there's a little gap here on the inside. Longhurst poked the nose through just to let him know he meant business. The times yesterday in qualifying, absolutely uh, sensational. Scaife and Richards both under the, uh, the track record. Tony Longhurst was, uh, was third fastest, but he's... <laughs> having a bit of strife here. Mark Gibbs, I think, still probably feels that uh, he was gone out a lap ago, and he's left a door open big oh, enough you could drive the Scaife Foden through. Here comes Scaife, makes his move on Gibbs, pushes oh. him out of the way as they come up lap car. Traffic. And he comes, squeezes down the inside of Longhurst as well. He's taken two cars within about a three or four hundred metre distance. Jim had the script right. Mark lost the plot. <laughs> now here comes Gibbs back on the inside of Longhurst. Better acceleration out of the corner onto the straight. Longhurst gets left a little bit behind. So Gibbs Slots into third position. We've got Nissan's one, two, three, then Tony Longhurst, Colin Bond, and I think Paul Morris, Tony's teammate there in sixth place. So very tight battle for the top six. Last lap through for Jim was a 53 neat. As most people would be aware, the um, Whitfield team Nissan flying, putting an entry in for the uh, two is 1000 at Bathurst, claiming they want to run in the spec that they did last year, about 1360 kilo, and no pop off foul. Cams of the Performance Review Committee this week uh, decided that uh, the car will run as it finished the Australian Touring Car Championship Series, which the car won, and uh, the National Council of Cams have upheld that. So uh, Freddie Gibson, if he wants to run at Bathurst at the moment, and of course uh, Bob Forbes and his team, the Nissans, will have to run as they finish the Touring Car Championship. Has made everyone happy if you're a Nissan GTR owner. And at the moment, as we've seen, Mark missed the start and has been able to come through the field. That's even more pressure on them. As I said, the script was right. There was Tony Longhurst climbing all over the GTRs, and then all of a sudden, with some lap cars in here, Richards has gone through in car number one, escaped right behind him. He's driven very, very well, Mark, after missing the start. And Tony Longhurst has dropped back off the queue. He's back to fourth and applying pressure still on Mark Gibbs. I think you have to acknowledge that Mark Scaife's put in a fabulous 1992, winning the Tui's Australian Drivers' Championship and uh, picking up the Touring Car Championship as well. He's really running hot. He's shown today that he can get through the traffic cleanly. He's right on the back of Jimmy Richards at the moment as they come up to two laps to run. Yep. So it's been a marvellous drive from him. 
We take our Nissan race cam now. We're riding with the race leader, Jimmy Richards, and there's Mark, Stafe, Mark Scaife, rather, closing very, very quickly. Well, Mark Scaife's won just about everything there is to win in Australian motor racing, and he's still only 25. Australian touring car champion, former Bathurst winner. And now it looks like he's going to go for the Amps car championship as well. Jimmy Richards, car number one. We take our Nissan race cam. There's the gap between first and second coming down to the lake. You get the last lap board next time around. Not much between them. Mark Gibbs back in third. Longhurst second breath comes charging back at him. So it has the makings of a very, very strong and close finish here. Along the short shoot to the right-hander. And last lap board about to come out now. There it is. So the teammates, Jimmy Richards and Mark Scaife, lead up the hill mark gibbs trying to hang on to them for a tow and terrorizing him is tony longhurst the enforcer in the b and h bmw and he'll be looking for one mistake from gibbs and here he may have it no he poked the nose down on the entry to the corner now somewhere between here and the lake corner that opportunity may come back for uh, tony longhurst actually i'll give a wrap to mark gibbs he's been able to mm. pick it up again he sure has. He wasn't, uh, he was about eight tenths of a second off Scaife in qualifying. But he's really picked up the pace here. He's matching the pace of the Winfield cars and he's certainly uh, managing to hold out Longhurst in this final lap. Now wait for a big move here if Tony can pull it. Down the inside again. Can he pull it as he calls for gears? No, he can't. It's going to be the last turn coming up. Jimmy Richards, car number one, will lead them across the line. A one-two for the Nissan Winfield team. A third for Mark Gibbs and the GIO. GTR and fourth going to Tony Longhurst in the Benson and Hedges BMW. Well, if you're a Nissan GTR supporter, absolute delight. One, two, three. That's the way they finish. Richards over Scape Gibbs in third. Tony Longhurst in fourth. Paul Morris rounds out the top five. Back at Amaru in just a moment. Ten seconds to go before the start of the Formula Ford event, and it's Ronnie Searle on pole alongside him, Michael Dutton, Stephen White, Stephen Richards, Gavin Monaghan, Steve Ellery, and that's the top five. Ten laps for Coca-Cola Formula Ford trophy, and Ronnie Searle gets a great hole shot and leads up to the top of the hill for the first time. Michael Dutton there on the inside, these two great protagonists from the Formula Ford, but squeezing them up the middle, I think it's uh, the Clipsal car, Stephen White as they come down to the top for the first time. Look at Steve White, very aggressive driver. We saw some aggressive racing from him at Lakeside earlier in the year, and he's determined to make it. this a win of the last round at Amaru. Good stuff there from Stephen Richards as well. Ronnie Searle really had the, uh, the knock on them yesterday in qualifying, a 51.96. Michael Dutton coming up with a 52.3. And back behind them, not too much actually, probably uh, half a second in the uh, in the next four. Always uh, close racing in Emory Park, the in forwards, they come down to the lake for the first time. This is the final round of the Coca-Cola series and it's a great scrap for first and second. Michael Dutton in third, Stephen Richards in fourth, he's carrying new sponsorship this weekend from Valvoline. Cars come up onto the start, finish straight for the first time. It's still in the action, Suzuki entry who leads by a car link to the Mobile. And I watched the preliminary earlier on today and it was a great race. Typically tight racing from the Formula Ford boys, the top seven covered by less than a second. And Ron Searle's pole time was almost a second under Cameron McConville's pole from the uh, Driver to Europe series here in February. So these boys are going quicker all year. And it's very tight in the point situation too. Stephen White and Ron Searle both on nine points. So whoever wins this contest wins the Coca-Cola Bottlers Formula Ford series. So it's going to be pretty tight. They're just opening up a slight gap now for a second to third pulling away ever so gently. Dutton's going with them a little bit. Stephen Richards a fairly lonely drive at the moment in fourth, and then a bigger gap back to fifth and sixth. There's Stephen Richards, son of the touring car great Jim Richards, in fourth place. He's been a big improvement in the Formula Ford pack this year. Started off racing a locally built chassis last year, moved to one of the different band units, and he's shown true colours. He's doing really well. Fourth position here behind Michael Dutton, one of the leading drivers from the Drive to Europe Championships this year as well. They come over the top. There's Michael Dutton in the Swift. Has he had a very consistent season, Michael Dutton? Won a couple of rounds and uh, pushed them right to the finish as far as the points championship was concerned. And uh, big news in Formula Ford, the first change in 25 years is they're going to get rid of the 1600cc engine and put the twin cam 1800cc Ford engine in it next year. That's certainly happening in Europe. I think there's going to be a, a delay of, say, two or three years in Australia to allow people to adjust. And I guess, Neil, with uh, 
130 brake horsepower in one of these things would be pretty wild sort of package to drive. Yeah, I imagine it would be. We're looking at Stephen Richards, car number 31, the Valvoline entry. I mentioned young Steve before. Finished fifth in the preliminary earlier on in the day. But attempting to emulate his, uh, his champion father, Jim, who's had such a wonderful career, and Stephen's doing a good job. Tucked in behind Michael Dutton at the moment. He's in third place. Stephen White in second. The leader is Ron Searle. And they're still fairly closely bunched, and these four have drawn away a little from the rest of the pack. I just hope that uh, in the fiddling process with the Formula Ford rules, we don't ruin a great thing, because despite the ups and downs of the country, we've had huge grids everywhere we've gone and tremendous racing. I can understand Ford's viewpoint, though, that the engine's no longer representative of what they sell, and they only build them specifically now for racing, and it's fairly old technology. Yeah, that's one of the great beauties of Formula Ford. It hasn't really been touched in the 25 years of its existence, and I guess that's the strength of it. So I hope that uh, when they get this new, more powerful engine, we're not going to have more political fighting and any sort of unreliability as far as the cars are concerned. They'll they certainly be pretty quick without any sort of aerodynamic devices on them. And um, it's been done as an answer to Formula Vox or Lotus and Formula Renault, which are really crowding in on Formula Ford in Europe at the moment. Yes, I think the, the manoeuvre has stemmed from the fact that Formula Fords continue to get weaker and weaker, particularly in England, uh, where Vox or Lotus in particular has become a very strong class, and strong television, big grids, good prize money, etc. So, uh, Time will tell what happens down here with the flow on effect, but this is a tremendous...